Now that we've gone over insertion sort, let's take the opportunity to look at some of its properties. We're going to extract out some general properties that we want to look at whenever we go over a new sorting algorithm. The main properties we want to look at with sorting algorithms are if they are in place, stable, or comparison based. Let's go over each of these in turn. So an algorithm is in place if only a constant number of helper variables to hold indices or elements are used in the algorithm in addition to the original input. So the memory of the input is not counted here. A sorting algorithm is stable if in the final sorted array, elements which compare equal appear in the same relative order as in the input. So for elements that compare equal, ties are broken by the position of the elements in the original array. Finally, a sorting algorithm is comparison-based if it only makes use of a comparison function on the elements, but not properties of the elements itself. For example, if you are sorting positive integers, an element could be used to refer to a position in an array. That would be making a use of a property of the element itself rather than just comparing elements to each other. So an algorithm which did that would not be comparison based. Insertion sort has all of these nice properties. It's in place, it's stable, and it's comparison based. So probably the most mysterious of these properties is stability. So let me talk a little bit more about that. As we mentioned earlier, st insertion sort is stable because we only swap an element with its left neighbor when the element is strictly less than its neighbor. Also note that elements in insertion sort only move from the right to the left. So this means that an element starting to the right of another element with which it compares equal can never move past it, and so it remains to the right of that element at the end of the algorithm. Okay, so that's why insertion sort is a stable sort. Now, why do we single out the property of stability with sorting algorithms? Let's see why this can be a useful property. Let's say that we wanted to sort this list of last name, comma, first name pairs. So we have uh, Apple, uh, comma, John, Orange, comma, Tim, Apple, comma, Elsa, and Orange, comma, Anna. Okay, so let's go ahead and sort that by first name. So now Anna comes first, then Elsa, then John, then Tim. We've sorted by first name now. Okay, so I've just repeated the list from the previous slide. We have Anna, then Elsa, John, and then Tim. So now say that we wanted to sort by last name, and we wanted to do this in such a way that all the pairs are in alphabetical order. So what that means is that when two people have the same last name, we're going to break the tie by the alphabetical order of the first name. So orange comma Anna should come before orange comma ten, Tim in the final sorted order. So if we sort the last names with a stable sort, then for people with the same last name, the relative order will be the same as in the, the, the list on the left. But in this list on the left, the people are already sorted by first name. So when last names are equal, the person with the alphabetically smaller first name will come first. And therefore, we get the names in alphabetical order as we desired. Okay, and if we, if we sorted by last name with a sort that wasn't stable, then we wouldn't have this property. We wouldn't be guaranteed that the final list of names would be in alphabetical order. So I hope you see now why a stable sort might, might be useful. And a very similar situation to this example is going to come up again when we look at a sorting algorithm called radix sort. Let me also just say briefly something about comparison-based sorting algorithms. So here we have the main subroutine in insertion sort, the insert1 function. And you can see in this function that we don't use the value vec i itself. 
uh, we only reference it when comparing it with other elements. And the advantage of such an algorithm is that it can work whenever a comparison function on the elements is defined. It doesn't matter if you have a vector of integers or strings or your own user-defined class. As long as you have a comparison function defined on the elements, you can use this algorithm. And the C++ standard sort function is also a comparison-based sorting algorithm. So to use that function, all you need to do is have a comparison function defined on your elements.